Thank you for joining me today to go over the ADAS model and a few examples of how shocks affect it to tie it all together. The aggregate demand aggregate supply model is designed to understand the business cycle and examines aggregate demand against the short run and long run aggregate supply with the price index or GDP inflator on the y-axis and the real GDP on the x-axis. The intersection of these three curves is also considered to be the long run equilibrium. Beginning with the aggregate demand curve, it re represents all domestic spending, including that of consumers and businesses, as well as that of the government and the total net exports. It also has a downward slope as seen here for three different reasons. First is the wealth effect, which means that as households have less wealth from inflation or prices rising, they are inevitably poorer and therefore decrease their consumption rates. Then there is the interest rate effect, which refers to how inflation pushes money demand to the right, which then pushes up interest rates, which then causes business and consumer investment to fall because they can't afford to borrow the money. And finally, we have the exchange rate effect, also known as the international trade effect, which is also connected to the interest rate effect because higher interest rates cause the exchange rate to appreciate because Canadian assets become more attractive and this in turn pushes up the Canadian dollar, leading to exports falling because our goods are more expensive and imports then go up because it is cheaper to buy foreign goods. This brings us to the short run aggregate supply curve, which is the relationship between price level and planned business production and is horizontal because it follows the Keynesian assumption that prices are considered sticky in the short run and do not change relative to a change in the output. There are three reasons that prices are sticky in the short run. First, most businesses operate within imperfectly competitive markets, which give them some control over the prices. Then there are the menu costs and how expensive it is to change the price within a business, from the signage to the software to the actual menu where this gets its name from. And finally, we have the fact that people just get plain angry when things get more expensive, but don't seem too upset when things are less expensive. Therefore, businesses will keep prices more stable in the short run so that customers know what to expect and will continue shopping there. Finally, we have come to the long run aggregate supply curve, which is where real GDP equals the potential GDP and the business cycle is at equilibrium. This occurs when prices are flexible and therefore creates a vertical line. Now, let's talk shifts in the curves from different shocks. First, there's the demand curve, which will shift due to both fiscal and monetary policies as well as expectations of what the market will do in the future. That is because these policies and expectations affect autonomous expenditures, including government and consumer spending. If there is a positive shock in the short run, say because investors are optimistic, the market will be good in the future, the business cycle will go through an expanse, creating a positive output gap. Then the curve will shift right, giving a higher GDP at the same price. Whereas a negative shock, because investors are instead afraid, causes the curve to shift left, resulting in a lower GDP at the same price. In the long run, however, a positive shock causes the short run aggregate supply curve to adjust toward upward toward equilibrium, and a negative shock will cause the short run aggregate supply curve to shift downward toward equilibrium. It also should be noted that any change in the inflation does not result in a shift, but instead a movement along the aggregate demand curve. That brings us to the short run aggregate supply shocks, which come from costs having major change for businesses, such as subsidies, input prices, taxes, and ex expectations about the future. If costs are massively decreased, it is a positive supply shock and the line shifts down, meaning prices fall and GDP increases. Whereas a negative shock from massively increasing costs and say a large tax being implemented on businesses instead causes the curve to shift to move upward, meaning prices go up and the real GDP go down, which is also known as stagflation. Finally, there is the long run aggregate supply shifts, which occur by anything affecting the potential GDP, including population changes such as immigration and emigration, increased or decreased spending on training to educate workers, as well as the motivation of workers, changing their retirement age, and finally, technology or infrastructure development that increases production. This is because potential GDP is where full employment occurs and anything that affects employment will affect the long run aggregate supply curve. For example, if there is an increase in the population, you will get a shift right and an increase in potential GDP and price.
But if you instead lower the retirement age and decrease spending on training, you would see a shift in the curve to the left, causing a lowering in the potential GDP and an increase in the price. That's all for this talk about ADAS models. Thank you for joining me and hope you have a lovely day.